In this video, we're going to be learning about how to use dot plots and histograms to display data. So to start, a dot plot is a data display in which each data item is shown as a dot above a number line. So each of these represent one. So there's one person with 61 and there's another with 61. Maybe this is scores on a test. And then there's three people that have 71. So you get to see each individual data point displayed. So if we're asked to create a dot plot for the speed of cars traveling over the bridge, what we're going to do is just create a dot over the number every time we see it. So if we start with something like 65, and we notice there's a 65 here and a 65 here, we're just going to put two dots. And I like to make them evenly spaced so that you can see them each time. Then for 70, we have one, two, Three times we see that, so we can put 73 times. You can basically do this in whatever order. Then we have one, two, three, four, so four seventy ones, And I just like to make them even lined up so that you can see it easier. Then 68, one, two, three, four, five, six times. So 66, 67, 68, six times. And you're going to go through each one. So once you have it all filled in, it should look something like this. So from this, dot plots are really nice because we can see every individual point. So if you're given a dot plot, you can actually just cross off from top and bottom to find the median. So this is a really nice way because some graphs don't show all of the data at once. So here's our median. So our median for the speed of cars traveling over the bridge is 68. Now a histogram is a graph that shows the frequency of data within equal intervals. So the height of each bar shows how many fall into that range. So our height shows our frequency. And let's make this for the same graph we just did, which was about speed. So what I'm going to do is make intervals. So I'm going to make my first interval from 50 up to 55, but not including it then 55 up to 60, but not including. So I'm gonna make these equally spaced intervals. Now in my first interval from 55 up to, 50 up to 55, there's only one. So I'm going to make a bar that shows a frequency of one from 50 up to 55. Now each category is called a bin. So in this first bin, I only have one data point, but I don't know whether it was 50, whether it was 51, but it was actually 54, but this data actually doesn't show that. Next up, I have from the 55 to 60 range. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna make my frequency at six. Then I have three in the next range and notice my bars are touching. And that is because it's kind of continuous data. So it, one leads into the next. So next up, next up, we have the 65 to 69 range. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's actually nine in this category. Then from 65, Oh, did I not? Oh, sorry, guys. So this one is three, and then we have nine. We have some technical difficulties here. There we go. Then from 70 to 75, I have eight. And the last one, I just have one. So here for eight. And then it drops back down to one. So this graph isn't as great for seeing each individual data point, but it is nice for just seeing an overall shape of different categories. 
Now we can describe histograms in a number of ways. The first way is by the number of modes. And remember, modes just means most often. So if we look at these bars here, we kind of just have one bar that's most often. So one mode is called unimodal. So this just means one mode. Sometimes we end up with more than one. So in the second graph, you kind of see we have two high points. So here this is called bimodal. So think two modes. Another way we can describe data or histograms is with symmetry. So if we look at the overall shape of these, the first easiest one to see is the middle one. So this one is symmetrical. And when we have something that's symmetrical, our mean and our median are gonna be about the same. So our mean is equal to our median. Now let's look at the two graphs on the left and the right. This first graph is called skewed to the left. So if we think about which side has the tail, we notice that there's a tail on this side or there's a tail on this side that's a little bit shorter and kind of trails off. So based on which side the tail is on, decides if we call it skewed to the right or skewed to the left. And you might be wondering about where that word skew comes from. So let's say these are graphs of test scores. Our medians are going to kind of be where our modes are. So right about here. Now, in this graph on the left, let's say most of the kids did really well. They all got 90s. But say there was a few down here that did really bad. Those few in the tail are going to pull my median down towards them, or to pull my mean down towards them, sorry about that. So my mean actually might end up somewhere down here. So although most of the kids did really well, the few kids that did bad are going to pull the average score down. So in this case, our mean is to the left of our modes. Our mean is to the left of our median. So our mean is less than our median, which is why we say skewed to the left. Our mean gets skewed towards the left or towards the, the tail. Now, for skewed right, the same thing happens. So maybe this is a really, really hard test where most kids got about 60 on them. However, there's a few kids who did really, really well in the tail. These few kids in the tail are going to bring the mean up towards them. They're going to pull it towards them. So think about this as like a tug of war. It kind of pulls it away from the median. So in this case, our mean is greater than our median because it gets pulled towards the right or it gets skewed towards the right. Another way we can describe data is standard deviation. So standard deviation is talking about how spread out something is. And it really only makes sense to talk about standard deviation if we're talking about um, if we're talking about comparing different graphs. So let's say we're on a super fast highway for some reason. I can't think of a better example. Um, here in this first graph, all of our data kind of lies pretty close together. Then in this next one, there's some people going like 45, and there's some people almost going like 160. In our last graph, there's some people going 20 all the way up to maybe 180. So speed might not be the best one for this graph. But we start off with the smallest amount of spread. And we go up towards the largest. So this is the smallest standard deviation and this is the largest standard deviation. So we can compare standard deviation without knowing the actual value of standard deviation, although Eventually, in statistics, you would use the value of the standard deviation to describe things. Now, we have one more example. So in this, we have a histogram of student exam scores. So we have the score on the bottom, and then we have the number of students in each group. So how many scored about in that category? So with histograms, we can't tell each individual point, but we can kind of make it up. So in this first category, this first bin, we have two scores in this 40 range. So it's probably from 36 to 44. So in this 40 range, 
we've got two. Then in the 48 range, we have one. In the 56 range, we have one. In the 64 range, we have two. In the 72 range, we have four. In the 80 range, we have three. And in the 88 range, we have four again. So let's find the median of these. So we cross off from the bottom and the top, and we just keep going. Bottom, top, bottom. And our median is 72. So our median is somewhere in this category, although we don't know the exact value.